Good morning, friends. Today we will discuss the objectives of working capital. We will discuss the chapter management of working capital, unit seven, financial management. Before discussing working capital management, let me first tell you the objectives of working capital. We will discuss in this chapter the following four objectives. First, we will familiarize. With the concept of working capital. Next, we will discuss the significance of working capital. Next, we will discuss different determinants of working capital, and at last, we will discuss the criteria for efficiency in managing working capital. What will be our structure of discussion? Our structure of discussion will be like this. First, we will discuss. Give an introduction of working capital. Next, we will discuss significance of working capital. Next, we will focus our discussion on operating cycle. What is the importance of operating cycle in working capital? Next, we will discuss different kinds of working capital, components of working capital, importance of working capital, determinants of working capital, approaches of working capital, measuring working capital, and working capital management or inflation. what are the efficiency criteria and how cash management will be done all these things we will discuss so let me first tell you what is working capital a business require funds for two types of purposes one is for establishing the business another is for running the business ek business ko do tarah ka paisa chahiye ek paisa business banane ke liye aur ek paisa business chalane ke liye बिजनेस को जो पैसा चलाने के लिए चाहिए उसको बोलते हैं वर्किंग कैपिटल सो व्हाट इज वर्किंग कैपिटल वर्किंग कैपिटल इज द कैपिटल रिक्वायर्ड फॉर रनिंग द बिजनेस इट्स द कैपिटल रिक्वायर्ड फॉर डे टू डे अफेयर्स ऑफ द बिजनेस इट्स द कैपिटल रिक्वायर्ड फॉर ऑपरेटिंग द बिजनेस सो वर्किंग कैपिटल इज द कैपिटल रिक्वायर्ड फॉर ऑपरेटिंग द बिजनेस the capital required for establishing the business is fixed capital or permanent capital the capital required for running the business is working capital so next we will discuss why working capital is required the working capital money is invested in different current assets of the business what are the current assets generally working capital money is invested in cash invested in debtors working capital money is invested in stock these are the three major components in which the working capital money is invested working capital money is invested in cash it is invested in debtors and it is invested in stock cash debtor and stock are three important components of working capital so what is working capital working capital is the capital used for short term activities of the business so working capital in simple term is the investment required to continue business day to day operations without interruption if a business do not have sufficient working capital its day to day operation will be interrupted therefore working capital management is very vital as well as long term financial decision making is important working capital management is also important next we'll discuss what is the significance of working capital why working capital is important we have already discussed 
working capital is the capital required for running the business. If a business do not have sufficient working capital, it cannot manage its business properly. It will, it will, a business needs enough raw material to process. If a business do not have enough raw material, then what will happen? Its production might be hampered. The business must have enough cash to pay the bills. If it, it cannot pay the bills in due time, then its reputation in the market will be hampered. The business must have the ability to wait for market its finished product. Once you produce the goods, the goods will not be marketed, will not be sold at once. You have to wait for some period. And that for that period, the amount of money is blocked in fitnesses. That means in finished goods. That means some amount of money of the business is blocked in raw material. Some amount of money in business is blocked in cash in hand. And some amount of money of business is blocked in finished goods. Similarly, the business generally sell goods on credit. That means some amount of money will be blocked in debtors. Hence, for running the business, working capital is necessary. Like in our body, for running the body, we require blood. Similarly, in business, for running the business smoothly, we require working capital. Hence, working capital of a company is generally termed as the life blood of the company. It is known as the life blood of the company. Working capital is called life broad blood of the company. Without appropriate working capital, whether any type of organization, profit oriented or not, cannot carry its day to day activities properly. So, we have discussed working capital. Working capital is also called revolving capital. Working capital is also called circulating capital. Now, we will discuss the concept of operating cycle in working capital. What is the importance of operating cycle? The operating cycle is also known as working capital cycle. It is also known as cash to cash cycle. Suppose a business has cash. What is dodge? The business purchases raw material out of cash. The cash is converted into raw material. Then what happens? The raw materials are converted into finished goods. Raw materials are converted into finished goods. Then the finished goods are converted into debtors. Finished goods are converted into debtors. The debtors are converted into cash. That means the operation start with cash, then it converted into raw material, then it converted into finished goods, then it converted into debtors, then debtors pay back the money to cash. Hence, this is known as operating cycle or cash to cash cycle. What happens? Now, please see, suppose in the business, the when you pay cash and purchase raw material, it takes three days after payment of cash to get back raw material. Once you get the raw material, the raw material are to be processed and converted into finished goods. Suppose the business take seven days to convert the raw material into finished goods. And the finished goods are converted into debtors. That means finished goods are not sold at once. They are converted into debtors within, let's take an example, eight days. And debtors generally take a seven days credit period. After that, they pay, make payment. That means the cash is fast blocked for three days. Then the amount invested in raw material is also blocked for seven days. Total ho gaya, three plus seven, ten days. Again, the finished goods are blocked for eight days. Amount of money is invested in finished goods. It's blocked for eight days and the debtors pay seven days. In total, the cash takes 3, 7, 10, 10, 8, 18, plus 7, 25 days to convert it into cash. And this is known as 
operating cycle or cash to cash cycle the longer the cycle the more requirement is the working capital the smaller the cycle the shorter the cycle the less requirement will be working capital hence the the business always try to shorten this cycle which cycle working capital cycle वर्किंग कैपिटल साइकिल को बिजनेस छोटा करने की कोशिश करता है क्योंकि ये जितना बड़ा साइकिल होगा जितना लंबा साइकिल होगा उतना अमाउंट ऑफ मनी ब्लॉक्ड होगा कैश में रॉ मेटेरियल में पुलिस कोर्ट्स में डेटर्स में तो अगर हम ये साइकिल को छोटा कर दें तो क्या होगा हमारा वर्किंग कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट लेस होगा अगर ये साइकिल बड़ा होगा लॉन्गर होगा वर्किंग कैपिटल रिक्वायरमेंट विल बी ऑब्वियसली मोर this is the concept of operating cycle in case of working capital next we will discuss different concepts of working capital there are two important concepts of working capital one is known as gross working capital another is known as net working capital we will discuss what is gross working capital and what is net working capital gross working capital is the total of current assets of the business the amount of money required to finance the total current assets of the business is known as gross working capital hence gross working capital is equal to total of current assets total of current assets is equal to gross working capital next what is the concept of net working capital then net working capital is the difference between current assets and current liability so net working capital is the difference between current assets and current liability hence nwc is equal to total current assets minus total current liability now what is current assets current assets are those assets which will be converted into cash within one accounting period and what is current liabilities current liabilities are those liabilities which are to be paid back within one accounting year that is known as current liabilities okay now the difference between current assets and current liability is net working capital the net working capital may be positive or may be negative when net working capital will be positive and when net working capital will be negative in those cases where current assets is greater than current liability nwc will be positive and where current asset is less than current liability nwc will be negative so gross working capital will be always positive but net working capital may be positive or may be negative that means suppose 1 lakh rupees is required to finance total as current assets of the business out of 1 lakh 20 lakh he finance you will get from current liabilities that means net working capital is a is a is a concept where we deduct the current asset amount from the current liability amount next what is the major point of difference between gross working capital and net working capital we have discussed next the main idea is the gross idea of working capital stress upon quantitative aspect of the working capital whereas net working capital talks regarding the qualitative aspect of the working capital next we will discuss different kinds of working capital what are different kinds of working capital what are different categories of working capital working capital may be classified ordinarily into two types or two categories what are the two categories one is fixed regular or permanent working capital another is variable fluctuating seasonal or temporary working capital hence working capital may be of two types fixed working capital and temporary working capital or variable working capital fixed working capital is also known as regular working capital or permanent working capital and variable working capital is known as fluctuating working capital or seasonal working capital. or temporary working capital or special working capital so what is fixed working capital fixed working capital is that minimum amount of current assets which is required to be invested in the business in all time to come whatever may be the sales a businessman maintains some amount of stock in his shop whatever may be the sales 
a businessman gives minimum amount of credit to the customers whatever might be the sales a businessman maintain some amount of cash in hand that minimum amount is always blocked in the current assets of the business and that particular minimum amount which is always blocked in the current assets of the company is known as the fixed working capital or permanent working capital it is permanently blocked it is permanently tied off in the business so this is known as fixed working capital fixed working capital is permanently tied up or permanently blocked in the business hence it is known as fixed working capital or permanent working capital next one is fluctuating working capital or temporary working capital this working capital is required over and above the permanent working capital fluctuating working capital is required over and above the permanent working capital and it depends upon the changes in production and sales let's take an example suppose you are a cold drinks manufacturer you are producing cold drinks and selling it you know that during summer season the sale of cold drinks will be more hence the working capital requirement will be more in summer season in comparison to winter season that extra that particular extra working capital which is required is for a particular season only for 2 3 months only it is not permanently required hence this is known as fluctuating working capital or temporary working capital suppose you get a big order and to fulfill that order you need to purchase some material once the order is over that additional requirement of funds for working capital will be over and that is known as fluctuating working capital fluctuating working capital is required only for a short period of time but fixed working capital is permanently blocked but temporary working capital or fluctuating working capital is required to meet some special exigencies to meet some special occasions to meet the seasonal demand hence fluctuating working capital is required for short period of time where fixed working capital is required for long period of time if we can represent it in a diagram let's this is the diagram of a normal farm what is a normal farm normal farm is a farm where the growth rate of the farm is constant the growth rate is constant that means the farm does not grow in that case the permanent working capital will be a straight line o x o y it's a normal farm and this is the fixed working capital line it will be parallel to o x axis and temporary working capital will be over and above the permanent working capital so this is fixed working capital or permanent working capital and this is temporary working capital in different period of time point of time the requirement of fixed working capital is same you see the requirement is same in different period of time this is permanent working capital next one is temporary uh, this is a diagram of permanent working capital and fluctuating or variable working capital in case of normal farm in case of growth farm how the diagram will be there what is a growth farm a growth farm is a farm where there is growth rate in the sales if the growth rate increases year after year the sales figure increases its permanent working capital will also increase and the temporary working capital will be over and above the permanent working capital this is the diagram of a growth farm next we will discuss what are the components of working capital what are the components of working capital generally working capital has two components one is working capital is the money blocked in 
current assets of the business and if you will compare the net working capital concept we have to consider current liability hence for computation of working capital we require to estimate two things one is current assets another is current liabilities so what is current assets so there are two important components of working capital one is current assets another is current liabilities so we will discuss it one after one first we will discuss current assets what is current assets what is current assets we have discussed current assets are the assets which will be converted into cash within one accounting period एक ऐसा असेट जो कैश में कन्वर्ट हो जाएगा एक अकाउंटिंग पीरियड के अंदर उसको बोलते हैं करंट एसेट्स सो करंट एसेट्स आर द असेट्स इन द फॉलोइंग फॉर्म्स करंट एसेट्स मे बी इन फॉर्म ऑफ कैश करंट एसेट्स मे बी इन फॉर्म ऑफ अकाउंट रिसीवेबल और डेटर्स करंट एसेट्स कैन बी इन फॉर्म ऑफ इन्वेंटरी व्हाट इज इन्वेंटरी इन्वेंटरी मींस स्टॉक current assets may be in form of stock of raw material current assets may be in form of stock of work in progress current assets may be in form of finished goods and advance payment of expenses is also a part of current assets what is advance payment of expenses this is also known as prepaid expenses expenses paid in advance prepaid expenses is also a component of current assets similarly temporary investment that is a component of current assets so these are different form of current assets next we will discuss the second component of working capital that second component is known as current liabilities so what current liabilities what are different type of current liabilities we will discuss what is current liabilities current liabilities are those liabilities which are to be paid back within one accounting period it can be in form of creditors it can be in form of expenses which not yet paid expenses incurred but not paid which is known as in form of outstanding expenses the outstanding expenses are a part of current liability the current liability may be in form of temporary or short term borrowing from different banks and financial life institutions it can be in form of advances received from different customers or it can be in form of other current liability such as tax liability dividend liabilities like this so these are two important components of working capital one is current assets another is current liabilities so next we will discuss importance of working capital management why working capital management is important we have already discussed working capital play a key role in management of the organization if working capital is not managed properly working capital is deficient then many business whatever big it might be it is it is bound to fall working capital deficiency or mismanagement is widely recognized as the major cause of many business failures most of the major cause main main cause of business failures is mismanagement of working capital hence working capital failure can bring technical insolvency to the business if a person cannot manage working capital properly it will be technically insolvent what is a technical insolvency technical insolvency is a situation a firm is not legally insolvent but it is not able to pay back its money in due time that is known as technically insolvency and this technical insolvency of the firm may bring dissolution to the company hence proper management of working capital is must for sustenance of the business for long term survival of the business okay next if there is excess working capital there will be problem if there is shortage of working capital there will be problem so working capital is 
should not be in excess or working capital should not be in shortage if there is excess of working capital or shortage of working capital what are the problem problems of shortage of working capital if there is low working capital if you maintain low working capital what are the problem if you maintain more working capital what are the problem shortage of working capital may lead to the following problem what are the problem first problem arise due to difficulty in meeting day to day commitment if you have shortage of working capital you will face difficulty in meeting day to day commitments of the business इलेक्ट्रिक वाला पेमेंट के लिए आया होगा आपके पास पैसा नहीं स्टॉक जो दिया था वो पैसे के लिए आया होगा आपके पास पैसा नहीं होगा यू कैन नॉट मैनेज योर डे टू डे कमिटमेंट्स इफ यू हैव शॉर्टेज ऑफ वर्किंग कैपिटल इफ यू हैव शॉर्टेज ऑफ वर्किंग कैपिटल योर फिक्स्ड एसेट्स मे नॉट बी एफिशिएंटली यूटिलाइज्ड इफ यू हैव शॉर्टेज ऑफ वर्किंग कैपिटल you will not get attractive credit opportunity you will lose and if you have shortage of working capital in the market your name and fame will be at stake you cannot honor your short term obligations similarly if you have excessive working capital or abundance of working capital excessive working capital is also a problem what are the problem of excessive working capital excessive working capital result in unnecessary accumulation of inventory excessive working capital means you will have excess cash what is required you will have excess inventory what of what is required you will have excess debtors of what is required so excess working capital means unnecessary accumulation of inventory excess working capital means unnecessary liberal credit policy excess working capital means unnecessary management of funds mismanagement of funds hence it will be bring managerial inefficiency so a farm should maintain not excess working capital not shortage of working capital but it maintains the right amount of working capital on a continuous basis hence the next question comes how to decide that right amount of working capital how working capital is found out how much working capital is required there are financial and statistical techniques which are easily helpful in predicting the quantum of working capital so now we'll discuss different determinants of working capital which factors affect the working capital requirement of the business the first factor is nature of business what is nature of business if there is a trading and financial enterprise trading business require less amount of working capital in comparison to manufacturing enterprises manufacturing enterprises require more amount of working capital whereas trading enterprises require less amount of working capital size of the business we have already known that if the scale of operation is big working capital requirement will be big small size of business require small amount of working capital large size business require more amount of working capital hence working capital also depend upon the scale of business next manufacturing cycle what is manufacturing cycle the time required to convert the raw material into finished product that is known as manufacturing cycle raw material ko finished product banne mein kitna time lagta hai if in your business manufacturing cycle is longer working capital requirement will be low more and if in your business working uh, manufacturing cycle is shorter then working capital requirement will be less hence manufacturing cycle also decides the working capital requirement of the business next business fluctuations what is business fluctuations business work in a wave like movements like generally the economy 
fluctuates in a wave-like movement, which is known as business cycle. There are boom period, there are recession period. In case of boom period, the sales of many farms increases. Hence, in that time, the working capital requirement will be more. In good times, in boom period, working capital requirement will be more. And in recession time, there is doom in throughout the business, in off-season throughout the business. In that case, sales of different business comes down. In that case, working capital requirement will be less. So business fluctuations also affect the working capital requirement of the business. Next, production policy. The production policy also decide the working capital requirement. What is production policy? In which period you produce? If your demand of your product is seasonal in nature, let's take an example. You are making woolen garments. Generally, woolen garments are sold during winter season. But woolen garments are produced prior to winter season. It means if you are demand you are producing winter garments, your working capital requirement will be more in that season where you will produce the product, not where you will sell the product. Hence, if the production policy, whether you have a continuous production policy or seasonal production policy. If your production policy is seasonal in nature, then in that case, the working capital requirement will be more in that season where the production, majority of the production activity is done. Next, turnover or circulating capital. That means we have already discussed the working capital cycle also determine the working capital requirement. The operating cycle also determine the working capital requirement. The more the longer the operating cycle, more is the requirement of working capital. Shorter the operating cycle, less is the requirement of the working capital. Next, credit terms. What is the credit policy of the firm also require the working capital requirement. If your credit policy is liberal, then working capital requirement will be more. If the credit policy is stringent, working capital requirement will be less. Then growth and expansion activities. In case of growing firm, working capital requirement will be more. And in case of growing industries, necessitate more working capital than stagnant business. Next, operating efficiency. If you operate your business properly, efficiently, working capital requirement will be less. If you mismanage your organization, working capital requirement will be more. And price level changes during inflation, working capital requirement will be more. And other factors, other factors, dividend policy also affect the working capital requirement of the organization. If you pay more dividend, then working capital requirement will be more because a majority portion of the cash will be utilized in payment of dividend. Next, we will discuss different approaches to managing working capital. Generally, there are two approaches. One is traditional approach. Another is operational cycle approach. Traditionally, we focus on managing working capital by looking at each element of working capital. That means we are focusing on inventory management. We are focusing on receivable management. We are focusing on payable management. We are focusing on cash management. This is conventional or traditional approach of working capital management. Lekin, nowadays, companies are shifting to operating cycle approach. We have already discussed what is operating cycle. It is cash to cash cycle. Cash, raw material, finished goods, debtors, cash. And nowadays, companies are trying to shorten this operating cycle. How they will shorten the operating cycle so that less amount of working capital will be required for the business. 
This is known as operating cycle approach. In this approach, we always try to reduce the number of days engaged in each stage of operating cycle. So we want to reduce the lead time of purchase. We want to reduce the conversion time of raw material into finished goods. We want to focus on reducing the sale time of finished goods to debtors. We want to focus on reducing the number of days from collection of debtors. That is known as operating cycle approach. In case of operating cycle, our focus is to shorten the operating cycle so that working capital requirement will be minimum in the business. Next, we'll discuss how to measure working capital. What is the required amount of working capital for a business? How we will estimate it? The estimation of working capital is very simple. Estimation of working capital means estimating individual item of current assets and estimating individual item of current liabilities. And first we find out individual item of current assets and find out total current assets. Next we will find out individual item of current liability and total current liability. Total current assets minus total current liability will be our net working capital required. And we add some contingency to this calculation so that if there is any mistake or if there is in any mistake in estimation that will be adjusted in contingency. So we'll look at a problem and see how working capital is estimated. So this is the working capital estimation of Mr. Sriram Tricycles Limited. So how it estimate working capital? So first it estimate current assets, different current assets. What are the current assets? First one is raw material. It estimate that suppose it wants to maintain one month raw material. And in one month requirement of raw material is 5,000 kg. And each kg consists of 800. So 5,000 into 800, it comes to 40 lakhs rupees. Similarly, we will estimate the cost of finished goods. Then we estimate cost of work in progress. Then we estimate cost of debtors. And if you will add all these things, we will get total of current assets. Next, we will find out estimate different current liabilities. We estimate creditors. How much creditors will be will provide? We estimate outstanding wages and outstanding salaries. And we have to estimate this and from current assets, total of current assets, we will deduct this total of current assets is 320 and this 320 is gross working capital, GWC. From gross working capital, we deduct total of current liabilities. What is the total of current liability? The total of current liability is 75. If you will deduct from total of current assets, total of current liability, we will get net working capital 245. So our estimated net working capital is 245. But we add some buffer or we add some contingencies to it. Suppose the contingency is 20%, we add 49 contingency and total of working capital requirement of the business is 294. This is the way we estimate the working capital requirement of the business. What we will do, we estimate each and every item of the current assets and each and every item of the current liability from current or total current assets, we deduct total current liabilities and we get net working capital. With net working capital, we add some buffer for contingencies and we get the working capital requirement for the month. This is how we estimate the working capital. Next, working capital management under inflation. We have discussed inflation is a situation of continuous and steady rising of prices. It's a situation of rising prices. In this case, the price of goods and services rises on a continuous basis. And the value of money decreases during the period of inflation. 
so in at the time of inflation generally more amount of working capital is required so how to counter the effect of inflation we will discuss this so during the period of inflation we may adopt the following strategies so that working capital requirement will be within our cost first what we will do we will first use substitute raw material without compromising quality let's take an example in our product product a is used as a raw material and the price of product a is increasing continuously then in that case we may use product b which is a substitute material which will not hamper the quality of the finished product next during period of inflation we have to use motivational tactics so that the labor productivity will be more labor cost is more if their productivity will be more per unit labor cost will come down so during period of inflation we have to try to boost the labor productivity of the organization next during period of inflation we want to control the unnecessary cost like office decorating cost or unnecessary advertisement cost unnecessary payment delays we have to reduce those next during period of inflation what we will have to do we have to we will try our level best to reduce the or to shorten the operational cycle or working capital cycle we want to reduce the operational cycle or slower the operational cycle or working capital cycle so that working capital requirement will be less next during period of inflation we want to maintain a positive reputation so that we will make have a great bargaining power to get credit from the suppliers if we have a good reputation we can have a bargaining power to get a better credit from suppliers then only we can manage our working capital requirements during time of inflation next efficiency criteria whether we are managing working capital properly or not for this to judge this there are certain efficiency criteria we will discuss those efficiency criteria one after one what are the efficiency criteria working capital management efficiency in working capital management by consider by taking several factors into consideration what are the factors first we will judge whether the creditors have enough confidence in company's capacity to repay its short term obligation on schedule we have to judge whether creditors have confidence in us or not if creditors has confidence our working capital management is good if creditors do not have confidence in us then our working capital management is poor then whether we obtain a high inventory of our receipt whether our inventory is converted into sales frequently or not if inventory are frequently converted into sales our working capital management is good and whether customers are given reasonable credit or not whether we are able to provide credit facility reasonable credit facility to our customers or not if we are not able to provide reasonable credit to our customers then our working capital management is poor next whether we are obtaining appropriate credit from our suppliers or not then whether we have to find out whether adequate safeguards to ensure over trading or under taking trading or is in or not what is over trading trading beyond our capacity that is known as over trading what is undertaking trading trading below our capacity each and every business has a capacity to trade and this capacity is is derived from the net worth of the company so we have to make a comparison between working capital and net worth and find out whether the company is over trading or under trading so we will discuss 
So there are certain ratios which an organization generally follow while measuring the efficiency of working capital. What are those ratio? We'll discuss. One ratio is current ratio. What is current ratio? This is the ratio of current assets and current liabilities. A business must have sufficient current asset in comparison to its current liabilities. Generally, we follow a rule of thumb of two is to one. That means for one rupee of current liability, we must have two rupee of current assets. But all current assets are not quickly converted into cash. Hence, we calculate another ratio. That ratio is known as quick ratio. In case of quick ratio, we find the relationship between quick asset or liquid asset to current liabilities. In this case, what is quick assets? All current assets except debtors and prepaid expenses. So from current assets, we minus non-quickly realizable assets. Generally, those are non-quickly realizable assets. Those are debtors, uh, inventory. So current assets minus inventory is equal to quick assets. Next, a generally a rule of thumb of one is to one is followed in case of quick ratio. Next one is cash ratio. What is cash ratio? Cash ratio indicates the percentage of cash a business has to its current assets. Generally, a cash ratio of 0.5 is to 1 is treated as a rule of thumb for cash ratio. Next, we calculate some other ratio. One is known as sales to cash ratio. In this case, we calculate what is sales divided by what is average cash balance maintained in the organization. So the purpose of this ratio is to turn the cash as many times as possible to make maximum sales. Next, we calculate a ratio that is known as average collection figure. How it is calculated? Debtors by credit sales into 365. What does average collection period? Suppose a business, the average collection period is 30 days. It means it shows how many days of credit a company is allowing to its customers to settle their bills. Average collection period tells the average credit allowed by the customer. Next, average payment period. What is average payment period? This ratio shows it indicates what is what does average payment period indicates? Average payment period indicates how many days credit is being enjoyed by the company from its supplier. Then another thing is inventory turnover ratio or ITR. What is ITR? It is calculated by sales by average inventory. Inventory turnover ratio tells how many times the inventory is converted into sales. Working capital to sales ratio. Working capital to sales ratio, it is calculated as working capital by net sales. It is expressed as a percentage. It denotes that certain amount of working capital is necessary for a given amount of sales. What is the percentage of working capital to the sales of the organization? And next most important ratio is working capital to net worth ratio. This ratio is used to predict the over trading or under trading. So working capital by net worth, we get the working capital to net worth ratio. And we compare this ratio with the industry average. A over trading takes place where there is combination of two things. One is high inventory turnover ratio and low current ratio. And under trading takes place where there is combination of two things, low inventory turnover ratio and high current ratio. Hence, this is different ratio which you are using to predict the working capital of the business. Next, in this model, we'll discuss a concept that is known as cash management. What is cash? Cash is king. We know that cash is king. In the business, the person, a business must maintain amount of cash in hand because 
Cash is the most liquid asset of the organization. Cash means liquidity, and it plays a major role in deciding the growth and profitability of the organization. Hence, proper cash management is necessary to provide enough liquidity for the business. A business must have proper cash management. Now, please see if a business cash is the most unprofitable asset, non-profitable assets. Why cash is the most non-profitable investment? If you put money in form of cash, it will not generate anything. It is the most idle assets. Hence, one should not maintain excess cash. Again, one should not maintain few amount of cash. Or if there is shortfall of cash, it may. In where it may prevent a business from taking advantage of cash discounts and other advantageous opportunities. Hence, a business must have optimum amount of cash in its hand. So, generally, a business prepare three level of cash. What are the three level of cash? One level of cash is known as maximum cash level. Maximum cash level is that level of cash which must be maintained. Maximum. Beyond this, we should not keep the money in idle cash flow. Then there is minimum amount of minimum level of cash. There is maximum level of cash. There is minimum level of cash. Minimum level of cash. And between between them. There will be average level of cash. Generally, a business should not go beyond maximum level of cash or below minimum level of cash. Its cash level will be between maximum level and minimum level. It must be fluctuate between maximum level and minimum level. This level setting is necessary for cash management. You should not. Because a cash has two type of cost. One is transaction cost. Another is opportunity cost. If you maintain low level of cash, your transaction cost will be more. If you maintain high level of cash, your transaction cost will be low. So transaction cost curve is like this. Transaction cost curve slopes downward. This is transaction cost curve. And if you maintain low level of cash, your opportunity cost will be low. And if you maintain more level of cash, your opportunity cost will be high. So this is opportunity cost. So total cost of cash is equal to transaction cost plus opportunity cost. Hence, total cost slopes downward. It's a U-shaped curve. This is the total cost of cash. And a business should maintain that level of cash. Where total cost of maintaining cash is minimum. Hence, in this case, the business should maintain O M level of cash. The business should maintain O M level of cash because at this point, the total cost of maintaining cash is minimum. Next, a business should maintain low level of uh, optimum level of cash. Next one is management of cash flows. How a business will manage cash flow? Generally, a business must manage cash. There are two types of cash flow. One is inflows, another is outflow. Always the business should try to speed up the inflows. Paisa jaldi jaldi aaye, or paisa late nahi jaaye. This is the concept of management of cash flow. In this case. First is we have to speed up the collections. We have to speed up the collection. Speed up should be done with the help of different techniques. How we can speed up the collection? We can introduce traditionally we are introducing lock box system to speed up the cash. Nowadays in today's world we must adopt different new technology for quick transfer of funds. From the customers, like we have to adopt NFT system, or we have to adopt RTGS system. NFT means National Electronic Fund Transfer System, or RTGS system, 
or IMPS system so that money is quickly transferred transform from customer's account to business account. Next one is we have to recover the dues in proper time. We must have a continual flow of activity for collection of data. We have to provide discount for only payment of cash so that we will get back our money quickly. Then we have to delay the disbursement of cash. Suppose we have a target of 15 days after we have to pay the money. So we will pay, try to pay it on the deadline and without missing the deadline. Next, and if there is any ideal cash happening, it must be invested and it must be invested in some short term assets. In those assets, which will provide liquidity to the business. In short term assets or liquidity, the what are the three important conditions for investment of additional liquid cash? It must be invested in risk free assets. Next, it must be invested in a short maturity period assets and it must be marketable. It must be liquid. Hence, the excess ideal cash must be invested in highly marketable liquid investment. So, in our class today, we have discussed the concept of working capital. We have discussed a business require two types of funds for managing the business. One is business funds for setting up the business, another is funds for running the business. The funds for running the business is known as working capital. So working capital is the capital required for day-to-day -day operations of the business. Next we have discussed there are many factors which influence the working capital decisions of the business and we have discussed those factors one by one like manufacturing cycle, production policy, financing condition, growth and expansion needs, inventory turnover. These are some of the factors which influence the working capital requirement of the business. Next, we have discussed different ratios which indicate efficiency of management of working capital of the business. At last, we have discussed the concept of cash management in business. So, in our discussion, we have discussed some keywords. One is operating cycle. It's the it's also known as cash to cash cycle. It is the time gap between purchase or between spending cash and receiving cash. Gross working capital. This is the total amount of current assets. Net working capital. It is the current assets minus current liabilities. Fixed working capital. It is permanently utilized in the business. Fluctuating working capital. It is temporarily required for the business. Next, inventory turnover ratio. It's the average number of times the inventory has been sold during a period. Current ratio, it is the ratio of current assets and current liabilities. Quick ratio, it is the ratio of quick assets, that means current assets minus stock with current liabilities. Debtor turnover ratio, it shows the average debtor and average turnover. Average collection period, it simply means the period in which amount of money is recovered. Uh, the period, average period of loan given to the debtors. Average payment period, it simply means the period of money paid period of credit allowed to the creditors. Next, credit policy, these are the norms and guidelines of the credit giving policy of the organization. Norms and guidelines for providing credit. Next, credit terms, these are the terms in which credit is given to the organization. And last, we will discuss some questions on working capital management. First question is, what is working capital? What are the gross and net concept of working capital? Next, what is the difference between fixed and fluctuating working capital? Next, what is the significance of working capital management? Next, what are the factors required taken into consideration for estimating the working capital requirement? Next, what is operating cycle we have discussed? how this is useful in estimating working capital. Next one is how to judge different efficiency of management of working capital. At last, 
that is what is optimum cash balance and how it is arrived with this i conclude my session on working capital management thank you thank you for attending my class thank you